Okay, we're here with our old friend Matt Frazier talking about a wonderful time of the year, you know, the holidays, but it can be hard for some people, um, especially if you're missing a few loved ones. Uh, tell me a little bit about any advice you might have to help people get through the holidays. Well, the toughest part of the holidays is the fact that every single time we sit at the dinner table, we notice the people that aren't there. And what I have to let you know is that we all go through grief. And this is something that nobody likes to talk about. Nobody even likes to hear about this. I'm, I would be surprised if there weren't people who didn't turn off this, this interview right now. Because a lot of people don't realize that they're going through grief. But I can tell you, every single person does. It doesn't matter how much faith you have, how much you believe in the other side. Doesn't matter. It doesn't doesn't matter. You know uh, what your goodbye was like with your loved one. We all go through grief, and there's certain points within our life when things happen. When we're a attending a birthday, a celebration, a holiday, when we think of that special someone, and all of a sudden that grief comes rushing back. And that's the hardest thing, the hardest thing of the holidays, because it's an amazing time. We're with our friends, we're with our family, but it's also a really sad time because we're missing the people that are no longer a part of our lives. And that's what's so tough, because if you're grieving someone, the holidays, it's almost almost makes you feel like you want to avoid them. Oh, absolutely. And and. You know, and then you think of the, the traditions and, and the things you did with that person. Um, and yeah, you do want to kind of crawl into a little shell. Um, I, is there anything, do you, would, do you think you should just sort of do whatever your heart feels if you are grieving? Or is there something you can kind of go through to maybe, is there anything the other side has told you? Like, hey, tell these people. You know. Well, what the other side tells me all the time is don't avoid the holidays, embrace them. You know, yeah. the one thing that people do, especially if you're in grief, and this is how you know without a doubt that you're that you're in grief, okay, is if you try to avoid things. If you want to avoid the holidays, if you want to avoid a certain family get together, if you want to avoid celebrating, if it doesn't feel right to you to celebrate, if it doesn't feel right to you to, to share memories or to create new memories with your family because you're missing that person on the other side. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's one thing, Gina, that the spirit world always tells me, it's this, is that they wish that they could come back and just tell their loved ones one thing. They could. They wish that they could tell their loved ones that they truly were at peace, that they were okay, and that they wanted them to continue living life. All of my readings, all of my messages have that in common. And what I want you, what, what, what I want you to know is that it's during this time when our loved ones are the absolute strongest. I mean, right now for me as a medium, this is my busiest time of year, and it's not because of my clients. It's because of the souls that are on the other side. Because during this time, there's actually a heightened activity with the spirit world of all of these souls that are trying to reach their family members here in this world for that reason. Because right now, I don't care where you live in the world, when the holidays come around, everybody all at once are thinking about their loved ones that have passed on. And when we think about our loved ones that have passed on, when we say, I really wish my dad was here right now, I really wish my grandmother was here, I really wish that my sister and my brother was here, Literally, you're calling upon that soul and you're sending that message to that soul. And that soul is also trying to reach you. And I can feel it going on right here, right now, you know, every single day. Yeah. So what I really want to show people is this, is that if you're missing your loved one on the other side, remember this. They might not be here in the physical world, but if you watch the work that I do, I can assure you that your loved ones are with you through life. And when our loved ones leave this world, your eyes become their eyes. What your loved ones really want to see is you spending time with your grandkids, spending time with your son, spending time with your daughter, creating new family holidays, cre creating new family traditions, making new memories. Why? Because your loved ones in spirit get to enjoy that time with you. You know, the worst thing for our loved ones in spirit is to see us sad, to see us crying. And the reason why, Gina, is if you think about it, and if you've had my eyes, your loved ones in spirit are not sad. They're not crying. They're not in heaven worried. They're not in this strange, unfamiliar place. They're with those they love on the other side. And what spirit always tells me is that if they're at peace on the other side, then we can be at peace here in this world. We just have to know it within our heart. So even though it might seem uncomfortable to you, right? Celebrating the holidays, creating those memories, spending time with those you love. It's something that you have to do because it's part of that journey in grief. And one other thing I got to say is this is grief disguises itself. And the reason why is that, like I said, a lot of people don't realize that they're going through grief. But grief takes all of the happy memories of our loved ones. It takes all the things that we know in our heart. Like for example, before your loved one passed, you might've believed 
fully in your heart of, with heaven. You, when, when Before you loved in the past, you may have fully believed in the other side, the spirit world and spirit communication and all of those good things. But the moment that a loved one passes away, grief makes us rethink things. It makes us rethink, is our loved one really at peace? Is my loved one really with me? My mom's not here. She's not sending me signs. My loved one is mad at me. My loved one is upset with me. And all of these thoughts start to come in, but they're not true. They're thoughts of grief. Wow. Wow. Are there any signs then that maybe you might have turned off that you should sort of look for, especially around the holidays that you're, you know, like angel numbers or, or anything like that? that you well, one of the things that you can do before we even get into signs is this. One of the best ways to kind of combat grief with the holidays is this, is that a lot of people hear the term letting go. And I, if you've, if you've lost someone in your life, then you've heard someone tell you it's time to let go. Well, I'll tell you as a medium, I don't believe in letting go, but I do believe in keeping in touch. I believe in letting go of, for me, letting go is letting go of the sadness, letting go of the pain, letting go of hurt, but never letting go of our loved one on the other side. In fact, the way that I like to deal with grief is by keeping your loved ones close to you. How do you do that? It means that when you're going through that holiday, when you're going through that Christmas celebration, that Thanksgiving, whatever it is that you're celebrating with your family, that special holiday, that special birthday, what I want you to know is that you can include your loved ones with you. Put out a place setting at the table. Honor them. Speak memories of them. You might be sad. might make you cry. But at the same time, you'll feel good knowing that they're there. Talk to your loved ones before that family event. If you're having a hard time spending time with the grandkids this year, talk to your dad in spirit and say, Dad, I'm going to have a really hard time being without you this year. You know, please just give me a little sign. Let me know that you're there and with me. Please help me through this holiday. And then talk to them. Talk to them either through the holiday or after the holiday. For example, example, when you come back home and you're saying, oh my God, I really wish that my husband was here to see the kids. Talk to your husband in spirit and just say either in your head or out loud, honey, I really wish you were here. Oh my God, your grand your grandson did this, 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 and this. He can walk now. He can talk. You know, when you, when you share these things with your loved ones in spirit, one, they can hear you. Two, you include them within your life. And three, you let them know that they can respond back to you. And I want you to know this, as much as you love hearing from your loved ones in spirit and getting those signs, your loved ones also love hearing from you. That's amazing. I love that. Um, there's also sort of an interesting part of this too. Um, for those of us who maybe are not grieving at that time, but we have that person in our life who is grieving, you know, you you read about the awkwardness. Some people will avoid talking about the person. Some people, they don't know what to say. Do you have any advice for people on how to, you know, help your friend who is grieving, especially during this time? Well, I would definitely bring it up. Absolutely. And sometimes, you know, the thing is, is the best way to bring it up is to bring it up a memory. Oh my God, I remember last Christmas or two Christmases ago when your husband came and he did this or your wife came and she did that. You know, the thing is, is that you also got to think about the person who's grieving. And sometimes the person who's grieving doesn't want to bring up their loved one in spirit because they're afraid of what other people will say uh, or think. For example, I know that a lot of people feel after they lose a loved one that they have to suppress those stories and suppress those memories because they're afraid of, you know, their family members getting upset for bringing it up or they they feel as though that they're dwelling on it. So sometimes it feels good when you can share a memory. And that's what the holidays are all about. It's about creating new memories, but also remembering past memories. And like I said, if you can't bring up one of those memories, that's really difficult, you know, because that's what the holidays are all about. It's about remembering people who are here and people who are no longer with us and that's a big part of tradition and that's something that i think everybody has to be reminded of yeah ex exactly exactly so that is that is good sort of keep the person present and talk about something lovely that happened and keep that all right that's good um and then just going into the new year you know i know people make re resolutions things like that anything from the spirit world that you like going into a new year Anything? What I love about going into the new year is the fact that it's a perfect time to start over new. You have 365 days that's coming up. What are you going to do differently? And, you know, the spirit world teaches me or tells me all the time, because they have a lot of advice for us here living, that, you know, every day is about growth and change. So instead of being fearful of the new year, how can you embrace it? How can you be a better version of yourself? And if you ask yourself that question, you can even put it as a journal entry. How can I be a better version of myself going into this next year? Is it the, it, and everyone always goes to weight loss, right? We all want to, we all want to lose weight. <laughs> Go to the gym, right. <laughs> right. But what is it, what else can you be doing? Is it that you want to have, you want to be less anxious? Is 
is it that you want to you want to start a little savings account where you put more money aside so you're not feeling strapped for money all the time? Is it that you want to reach out to, to more friends and family members that you haven't talked to? Is it that you want more personal time for yourself? Well, you know, it's not just about saying it and putting it out into the universe, but also making action steps. For example, if you want to lose weight, because I know everybody wants to lose weight, right? Actually put it down in your calendar. If you're serious about that, say, okay, listen, I'm going to go to the gym once a week. And let's say you don't want to go to the gym because I'm not a gym person. Okay, you know what? Guess what? Friday, every day at three o'clock, I'm going for a walk. I'm going to take a 30 minute walk. And even if I lose one pound a month, guess what? Or even if I don't lose a pound, if I just feel healthy, it's it's being a better version of yourself, right? And and listen, exercise has never hurt anybody. So that being said, there's, that's one thing you can do. Another thing that you can do is like I said, personal time for yourself, put it down in the calendar. You know, when we say things out to the universe, it's not just about putting it out through speech. It's about taking steps so that heaven and uh, heaven and our loved ones in spirit can help us. So one of those things is, like I said, if you put it down in your calendar, you're more apt to follow it and you're more apt to make use of it. For example, you're strapped for money. You say, next year, I want to save money. Don't just say it. Go to the bank. Open up that account. Start a weekly transfer autom or automatic. Help yourself to be a better you. That's yes. And that's good. And, and it, it is good because, um, you know, the, the universe or, or the souls, it seems that they have this wisdom that perhaps we don't quite have yet. So it is good to listen to them and sort of embrace the advice that they are giving you that you're going to give us. So. That's well, you know what it is too, Gina, is that on the other side, the spirits have already lived their life here in this world. Mm -hmm. And believe me, they know that life is challenging, difficult, and just outright hard. You know, nobody makes the, the nobody, nobody uh, makes the right decision always. You know, we always, we always are going to learn and grow and it's an experience. Mm -hmm. But what the spirit world always tells me is I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have known this. And that's why they pass that message on to all of us. Just like if you think, our grandparents and our parents, you know, they try to bestow that wisdom on us as they get older, right? Do we ever listen? No, I know I never did when I was a kid, right? But the thing is, is that they still try. And the one thing that the spirit world always tells me, the one thing that they wish without a doubt, every spirit, is that they wish that they didn't have so many limiting beliefs. And I think that if there's one resolution that we can all have, it's that. It's get rid of the limiting beliefs because in heaven, they believe in you. Your loved ones know your full potential. Your guardian angel knows your full potential. Your spirit guide knows your full potential. You know, we have this whole team around us in heaven that believes in us. And not just in heaven, here in this world. But, you know, it's funny because oftentimes we're the only one who doesn't believe in ourselves. That's so true. That is that is so true. Um, well, before I let you go, I have to ask, what is baby Royce getting for Christmas? This is, I think, the only year you're going to be able to, like, Fool him, because next year he's going to know about Santa. <laughs> well, I got to tell you something. This year, I mean, we were like, we really don't want that many gifts for Royce because he's got so much. And, you know, no, seriously, no, seriously, because he's got so much already. And the thing is, is that, you know, he's been outgrowing clothes so quickly. So it's like everyone wants to get him the clothes and the cute outfits. And, and literally, it's like we can't keep up with all the stuff. So we're like, you know. Just go easy on the gifts this year. And of course, nobody did. So, so far, he's got upstairs. Uh, his grandfather bought him a little Bentley car. You know, one of those ones where like they sit in, the parents can do the remote control and have them drive around. A another aunt and uncle got him like a like a little Bentley stroller that you can, he's 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 riding in style. So they, they matched gifts this year. His grandmother got him uh, some type of a jumpy house play. And let me tell you something. They're already opening up gifts and it's not even Christmas yet. They're, they're, but I think the grandparents are more excited than the parents are because we're like oh my god our house is getting so cluttered like like the walls are closing in they keep dropping off boxes of things and we should you know we should be feeling really blessed but we're Alexa and I are, are like clean freaks and we're like oh like the, like what are we gonna do with all this stuff oh no because um, <laughs> you know he's too the problem is is that it's a weird a weird age because you know yeah. there's not much they can do there's not much that you know right right now it's not like he can play with all these things right now so we're like well we're gonna be hanging on to this for the next three years yes, yes. and and some because and some yes crawling and walking and yeah but it's it's just got to be uh such a joyous time for you guys and i'm sure since he's been born born just life has probably been so much more fun 
You know? Oh my God, it's been so much more fun. Are you kidding me? I mean, it's absolutely amazing. And it's a different type of love, you know, like you, you, when, like everybody always says like the love of a child, the love of a child. I didn't understand what that meant until Royce was born. And then I realized that, you know, it's, it's a totally different love than I've ever experienced in all my life. Yeah. Oh, well, he's adorable. And um, I'm so excited for you guys for Christmas. And oh, this is going to be some really good advice um, because I think there are a lot of people with, you know, who are missing their loved ones. Oh, absolutely. And you know what? I think that the other thing too is to realize you can talk about your loved ones. I think that's the biggest thing because so many people feel like they don't because they don't want to make other people sad. They don't want to make other people upset. But, you know, when we talk about these things, yes, somebody might cry. Yes, somebody might get emotional. But at the same time, you know, sometimes tears also bring joy.